I've always been fascinated with gyroscopes and uh, they, they seem to defy gravity and what piqued my curiosity recently to do this set of experiments was I was watching a YouTube video by a, a YouTube channel called Veritasium. This guy does a great job with his videos. And he had done one where they had a 40 gram, or excuse me, 40 pound uh, rotor on a, a shaft spinning at high speed. And he showed how hard it was to pick up over his head if it wasn't spinning. But if he spins it up to a high speed and then lets it kind of follow a path of precession as he picks it up over his head, it was easy to pick up. And they did the same thing on a scale and showed how his scale weight hardly changed. I couldn't help but get interested in that, so I decided to do a few experiments on my own but on a little smaller scale with this, this arrangement here, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. This is a great little gyroscope I got from a place called gyroscope.com. It's a really nice machine. You can spin it at a very high RPM using a little battery pack here with this little high speed motor. And like I said, it works very well. It'll spin for a fairly long time before it slows down. <clears throat> I also got an extra, what they call, set of gimbal attachments for it. But for this demonstration, I'm not using those. I made actually my own setup. What I've got here, this is a just a flat um, kitchen type digital scale. It happens to be pretty accurate. It's made by Onyx. I got it from staples.com. It's accurate to one gram. So it works pretty well for what I'm trying to demonstrate. This is just a electrical uh, box top I got from metal one that I got from uh, one of the building supplies. <clears throat> this right here is the mounting part for a caster assembly. I wanted something that would swivel with bearings. I thought, well, just a, a caster would work fine. Then I got this straight uh, wheel assembly here that's not a caster, but I cut the caster off and simply glued this wheel onto that part just using uh, this type of glue, just an automotive type glue you can get from uh, any place really. And uh, works pretty well. And uh, this thing can swing through this range of motion here and it can rotate. And to demonstrate what I want, um, I think it works pretty good. It could be a little bit better bearings and those kind of clunky caster bearings, but it, it does work, and I think I can show you what I'm trying to with this. So, I added this stainless steel tubing here. It didn't really have to be stainless. Just as a way to push against the direction of precession, just to demonstrate some of the things I want to demonstrate. So we'll go on and I'll show you how to use this little high-speed motor. It can spin up to about 12,000 RPM with this super precision gyroscope. And, uh, I recommend wearing safety glasses, if anything, spinning this fast. Okay, I'm going to show you how to use this high-speed motor to spin this gyroscope up. You just take it and press it on the end here. I just hold it on, turn on the battery pack, just hold it here until it spins up to a, when I think it's as fast as it's going to go, then I just take it off. Again, I'd recommend wearing safety glasses when you do this. This turns pretty fast, about 12,000 RPM. There we go. This is a small diameter just piece of rigid plastic tubing. Only reason I've got it is just to use it to show a, a relative amount of force I'm pushing on things. And I had weighed this gimbal assembly here. And just this alone, without the shaft or any of the rest of it, weighs 139 grams. Just this rotor and the, the gimbal assembly right here. And uh, as you can see. 
Well, it's raining on the metal roof of my workshop building. I hope you can hear me. I wanted to point out that I paired the um, gyroscope assembly on the balance. You can see it's reading zero. So if it tends to lose weight, it'll go negative. If it tends to gain weight, it will go positive. And as you will see, you're not going to see the kind of changes you think you might. Um, but what I'm going to do now is spin this thing up and we'll do a few experiments. You see this, how this plastic rod is incapable of lifting this. Um, this is 139 grams, as we showed earlier. And uh, the reason I'm using this plastic rod is because it bends easily. And it gives you an idea of the amount of force required to move something. So I'm going to stop this, we'll spin it up, and we'll do a couple things. Okay, I've got the gyroscope spun up. You'll notice if you push down on the... Let's get it back up again. The precession speeds up in the direction of precession. Very little force required to raise the gyroscope up. You'll see the balance reading zero. You would think there would be an opposite force, opposite the force required for the gyroscope to come up in the air so many inches. It's 139 grams, but you just don't see it. Now, if you go the opposite direction, anti, what I call the anti-precession direction, very difficult to push. It's like it weighs more. It's hard to say if it really does on that balance. It appears to, but I'm not certain about that. The rod is definitely bending more. It's like the bearings are loaded up like it weighs more. Definitely much easier to push in the direction of precession. It's like the load is off the bearings. Absolutely fascinating. Now, it's not spinning at all. We're going in the direction of precession, the rod's bending more to push it. There's no question that when it's spinning and you're pushing in the direction of precession, it's definitely taking a load off those bearings. Rain on a metal roof may be great for sleeping, but it's not so great for videos. I hope you can hear me. If you look here, I've got a rubber band keeping the gyroscope from coming up. And I was pushing against the direction of precession, so-called anti-precession direction. I wonder if that restriction of movement down contributed to the, the resistance in the, bat, in the uh, bearings. I noticed this rubber band is keeping it from coming up. It's really still easy, relatively easy to push. Not sure if... Let's turn on the scale. Oops, we can't tear it like that. There we go. Still reading zero, still easy to push, even though the rubber band is preventing the gyroscope from coming up as high as it normally would. Definitely when you go the opposite way, anti-precession, definitely a much bigger load on the bearings. And at least resistance to pushing, you see the bend in the tubing. Interesting. If you enjoy this kind of science, you might enjoy some of the stories I've written. This one in particular, Willie's Revenge, it's a short story available on Amazon's Kindle store. You either need a Kindle or a Kindle app. And it's about three little or young geniuses who use gyroscopes to defeat some terrorists. This alien sighting at Table Rocks is kind of interesting. Another short story available on the Kindle or, you know, for a Kindle app. This right here is a novel I actually wrote back in 18, or 19, not 18, 1989. Brown Mountain Lights in the Mesozoic Phoenix. It's available in both paperback 
in ebook uh, format from iUniverse.com or Amazon.com. Anyway, concerning gyroscopes, this is the one you might want to read. Thank you.